This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. One of the first things we need to do in our Config Manager 2012 deployment is to extend and prepare the Active Directory schema and the Active Directory environment. Now, when I say one of the first things we need to do, really this is optional, but if we want to support automatic site assignment and the publication of site details into the Active Directory, there's a lot of important and uh, you know, particularly good features that come as a part of this Active Directory integration. So we'll want to do this um, now in order to get the Active Directory ready before we start to install our site systems. Now keep in mind that this is actually something we could do later as well. We could go through an entire site installation. We could begin to work in the environment using manual site assignments and not do anything with the Active Directory schema, and then later choose to extend the schema and support the automatic site assignment functionality. And so we could configure that at a later time if we wanted to. But let's start with it now as if this were the flow that we want to take. So the first thing we have to do is extend the schema. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm sitting here at my domain controller, and one of the things that I want to confirm is if I go into Active Directory Users and Computers, I want to take a look at the administrator account. So this is who I am currently logged in as. Now it doesn't really matter who I'm logged in as, as long as that person is a member of the Schema Admins group. Just because you're an Enterprise Admin doesn't necessarily make you a Schema Admin. If we're going to actually extend the attributes of the schema, we need to be a member of that group. So I am, which is good. So I'll go ahead and close this down. Now I want to go ahead and bring up the installation media, which you can see uh, I have loaded into a DVD drive on my domain controller. And so this is the System Center Configuration Manager 2012 uh, setup program or setup DVD. Go into the SMS setup folder in the bin folder x64 and in here are a number of different components including the setup programs, the prerequisite checker is in here and I'll just type the E. Uh, you'll find right here EXTADSCH or extend Active Directory Schema. So I'll just go ahead and launch that. Now that's going to launch inside of a command line while it does its operation and then it goes away. Pretty simple. So it flashed away pretty quickly and that's because it just doesn't have that much to say. Now, if I'm a little bit concerned uh, about whether that actually worked for me or not, I can go ahead and take a look on my local drive and you'll find in there an extend adschema.log file. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we can see that modifying Active Directory schema with SMS extensions. And we can define an attribute called site code, a new attribute called assignment site code, SMS site boundaries, SMS roaming boundaries. And by the way, do notice the SMS naming convention here on these attributes. And same with class objects. We're defining a new class of object of management point, server locator point, class of object for site, and also a class of object for a roaming boundary range. We'll be getting into all of these things as we go through the course, but we can see here successfully extended the Active Directory schema. Now, for those of you that might be familiar with extending the Active Directory schema for something like Microsoft Exchange, clearly this was a much faster and easier process. Exchange does a massive amount of schema extensions uh, in the Active Directory in order to prepare for um, email integration into your domain. This, it's a much smaller subset, but we have gone ahead and extended and created now the necessary attributes and objects for, uh, that, for our environment. So let's go ahead and close down our log. 
So now that we've done that, we need to do some final steps that are kind of manual here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my administrative tools and open up ADSI Edit. ADSI Edit is a great tool for giving us a very raw connection. I'll go ahead and connect to um, our domain. So I'm connecting into my domain controller, into the default naming context. And I can expand the domain name here. And under the system container, we see a lot of system-specific elements. And a number of these have to do with various different applications in the environment. And you don't have to worry about these or mess much with them. For instance, DNS type settings are uh, found in here. Now, what we need to do is prepare that system management container that we have in our environment. So if I go ahead and right click on CN equals system, and we're going to go ahead and say new, and we want to create a new object. And the object is going to be of a type container. It's a container object. Click next. And the value is going to be system management. System management. And it has to be a space in there, and it has to be named exactly. Go ahead and click Next and Finish. And we now have a system management container right here. Now, that is the container under CN equals system in our Active Directory where when it comes time, when you've installed your site systems and they begin to publish information about management points and site codes and boundaries, it will put them in this container. Now, if you don't manually create the container, it is possible for the publication of those uh, items to create the container for you. But it's a question of security permissions. Now, the computer that we are going to use, if I go ahead and bring up here my Active Directory users and computers, I have a domain joined machine called SCCM1. This is going to be our primary site server. It's going to be one of our site systems, which you can see eventually I may have a site system called SCCM2. There are a number of different systems that may ultimately be primaries or secondaries. Um, just depends on what route we take with our deployment. Uh, for now, I'm mainly concerned about SCCM1. Currently, it's just a Windows Server system. It does not have any Config Manager binaries installed on it yet because we haven't gotten to that part. However, when I do, that system will be the one that publishes its information into the Active Directory, into that system management container that we just created. So this computer right here will run with its own credentials. So Config Manager doesn't run as a designated service account. It runs as itself, uh, as a network service or as a local system. And so that account right there, SCCM, as a computer account, needs access to the system management container in Active Directory. Now, we can either go to the system container here and let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and refresh. And actually, let's go to ADSI a, back to ADSI edit, apologies. Here's system management. And if I go from here and I go to the properties of system management, we have a security tab. And on that security tab, we can specify who has access to this part of the Active Directory. And so this is where I would want to come in and click Add. And notice the object type, Users, Groups, or built-in security principles. Well, I need to add a computer in here. So let's go ahead and check the box to also include computers. And I want a computer called SCCM1. Let's go ahead and check the name on that, and it found it. Click OK. SCCM1 will have full control over this container. So I'll go ahead and click OK on that. So I've added that security. Now, that may be as much as I want to do. 
However, I would have to do that for every computer that will be a site system server that may be publishing information into uh, the Active Directory. So I've given it permission to write into this container. So instead of doing that, let's switch back over to uh, Active Directory users and computers. And let's go ahead and go into the, the users container. I'll go ahead and create a new group. And let's call it config manager servers. Make it a security group. Click OK. Config Manager Servers, I'll go ahead and open that up, and its membership, if I click Add, and once again, let's click Object Types and make sure we're adding members to this group that are of a computer type. If I just say SCCM and I check the names, I want both of these, one and two, both of my computers that are going to eventually be site systems are going to be added into this group. So this group membership can grow over time. It's a lot easier to manage the membership of a group like this. Every time I add a site system server, I might go ahead and throw it into this group. It's a lot easier to do that than it is to continually be editing and changing permissions. So let's go back to ADSI Edit, go back to our system management container, Properties, Security. Let's go ahead and click Add. And we're going to do Config manager servers and give them a full control. Now doing that means that I didn't really need to add in that individual account. So I could in reality remove that, which I'll go ahead and do. And we know that our config manager servers have been given full control to the container. And every time I plan to expand, if I'm going to install another site system server, I might want to throw them into that group to make sure that those site system servers can publish their information into AD. Because remember, they don't run as a, a designated service account. They run with the privilege uh, of themselves under their own uh, credentials. Computers behave in a domain just like users. They have a name and a password. We're basically saying that that computer can log in and connect and edit this part of the Active Directory. Now, one last point here is for ease, some people will come right here to the system container. Now, just to get our bearings, system management is the one that we manually created and edited the permissions on. But if you didn't want to manually create that container object, we could have simply come to the system container in ADSI Edit, gone to Properties, gone to Security, and added our permissions for our Config Manager servers here. Then, when a Config Manager server comes along and starts to publish its information, the first one will automatically create this container and then publish its information into that container. So that's sort of the easy shortcut way to do it, so you don't have to manually create the system management container. But keep in mind, by doing that, we are giving full control permission to our Config Manager servers over all of these subcontainers instead of just the ones that they need. So those are some of the steps we have to go through. We've now extended the Active Directory schema and created the system management container along with the correct permission so that our site system servers can publish into this part of the Active Directory. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.